Hi, my name's Tony Robertson. I'm crew supervisor for ground maintenance with Public Works. And today we'll be reviewing some safety pointers for string trimmers, riding mowers, and push mowers. First off, when we start off mowing with any type of equipment, we always want to make sure we have our personal protective equipment with us. Ear protection, either the earmuffs or earplugs, whichever is more comfortable for the individual. OSHA regulations require that we wear hearing protection anytime that noise level reaches 85 decibels or higher. Safety glasses and also we have gloves. Wearing safety glasses is very important because so much stuff flies through the air while mowing or weed trimming that any little dust particle, grass particle, even rocks or sticks could strike us in the eye. Debris can fly off the blades of the mower at over 200 miles per hour, thus the need for safety goggles. We must remember to wear long pants and sturdy work boots, preferably steel-toed work boots. Before we head out on any job, we do a pre-mowing inspection where we go over the mowers, the push mower and riding mower, to make sure everything is in order. We'll do a visual inspection of the tires to make sure they're inflated properly, make sure the lug nuts are tight, as well as there are no cracks or dent in the wheel. Make sure, of course, there are no punctures or objects stuck in the tires for leak, causing leaks. And we'll move around to check the belts and pulleys to make sure they're all tight and the belts are in good condition with no cracks or frayed in any way. And once we check for any damage to the pulleys or belts, we move over to the discharge where the grass is discharged from the mower and the safety chute. We always make sure that that's in proper condition so that it, it can uh, deflect the grass properly. And it's up position now for transport so that when we put it on the uh, trailer that we transport it on, it doesn't damage it. But once we get out in the field to start to mow the grass, we let the, uh, this, the guard down so that it catches the grass and deflects it down, downward. Once we've checked the discharge guard and everything there is in good working order, we move to the back of the mower where we can check the motor. And what we want to check here is the oil. We take the dipstick out. See that it's got plenty of oil. It's up to the full line where it re is required. And we put the dipstick back in. And we, here we also have a fuel filter that we check to make sure it's clean and there's no trash or debris in that that would, could possibly damage the motor. And we also use push mowers out in the field. And we do the same inspections on those as well. We check the tires, the guards, and uh, everything. And the, with the tires of a push mower, they're basically all plastic. So what we want to look for are any cracks or damage to the tires. Once they're checked out, we move to the discharge guard again. And here, with this mower, it's a mulching type mower so the discharge is completely closed to block the grass altogether. And we make sure that that's properly attached and in good working condition. And then at the back of the mower, there's a guard to where we can have a grass catcher attached. And if we don't have that grass catcher attached, we make sure that the guard is all the way down and tight against the back of the mower so no debris gets thrown back at the operator. When we get ready to start the mower, we want to check our blade stop. This is basically the on and off switch for a push mower. We press it down and that gives us the ability to start the mower. But before we start the mower, we want to check our cable and see as it runs down to here, we see it moving the lever that starts and stops the mower. We want to make sure that's moving freely and working properly. While that's being checked there, we look for our oil again. We check the oil of the mower. We check it, see that it's at the full mark, which is proper operating level. That concludes our pre-mower inspection for riding and push mowing. Now we're going to load the mowers onto the trailer for proper securing. When loading the mower onto the trailer, it is recommended that you go back first. This is for safety also because of the, this type mower the motor being in the back, it prevents it riding up in the front as you're going up the incline of the trailer loading it. 
Once the mower is loaded onto the trailer, you want to have it properly secured. And in this way, you take two ratchet straps, one for the front of the mower, one for the back, and secure it tightly down, giving you a four-point hitch as to holding the mower in place. Once the mower is secured on the trailer, you move up, check your trailer hitch to the rear of your truck and to the tr ball hitch, making sure that it is tightly locked down. Your safety chains are hooked and in place and your pigtail, which works the lights and the brakes of the trailer, is fastened properly, giving you good connection so that all your lights and brakes work properly. Part of our pre-trip inspection is making sure the mower is full of fuel before we head out into the field. And the proper way to do this is to we approach our fueling tank, we want to take the nozzle of the tank, come to the mower, and before we remove the lid to the mower tank, we want to touch the nozzle of the tank to the mower. This discharges any static electricity that may build up. Then we remo remove the cap to the tank of the mower, insert the nozzle, and begin fueling. And for added safety, we want to always remember no smoking and always have the mower turned off. And when we're filling our individual gas cans, we use the same procedure. Once we get our gas hose off the tank, we come to, it, to the uh, gas can, touch the gas can, open the spout, then insert the nozzle of the hose and begin fueling. Once the can is full, let go of the trigger, remove the nozzle, close the can. Once we arrive on site, we unload our mowers and prepare to mow. But first, we always take and ride unfamiliar ground so that we can be prepared for anything we may come up on. Once the area has been inspected, you want to stop and pick up any debris that may be on the ground that the mower could throw out that would damage not only the mower, but a building, people, or vehicle that may be in the general area. When you're out in the field and you're ready to start mowing, First thing you do when you get on your mower is buckle your seat belt. Once your seat belt is buckled, you're ready to start the mower. Pull your levers in, reach over, set your throttle about half throttle so the motor doesn't raise when it's started. Then you reach for the uh, choke lever, pull the choke, turn the key, the mower should start. Once the mower is started, you release your handbrake, set your deck level to the desired position, Turn on your blade, start mowing. With this type zero turn mower, you push your levers to the desired direction you want the mower to go, left or right, thus use the left or right lever. Push both levers forward, you go forward. Pull both levers back, you go back. And when we're out in the field mowing, we always want to be mindful of the direction the discharge chute is pointing in. In traffic, we have vehicles that constantly pass by, so you don't want to take the chance of throwing an object into a passing by vehicle. Have the discharge pointing away from the road so that we're clear of any damage to a vehicle. As we come up on pedestrians walking by, we want to stop the mower, turn the blades off, and wait till the pedestrian is clear of the area. As we come to hills, there's a possibility of a turnover. So you want to mow in the right direction. On the riding mowers, you want to go up and down. And when we're pushing, we want to go side to side. That way, if the mower gets away from us, we can easily let go and prevent any harm. And when you're in the field out mowing, if you happen to strike an object, you want to stop and follow this procedure. Stop and inspect the mower for damage. Notify your supervisor immediately and do not continue to operate damaged equipment. When you're mowing in the field and you happen to have to refuel your mower, you want to give the motor plenty of time to cool down. A rule of thumb would be maybe 10 minutes. Once you get your gas can, you approach the mower, take the can, touch it to the mower gas tank to discharge static electricity. Remove the gas cap on the tank of the mower, insert the nozzle of your gas can, Refuel your mower. Now I'm going to cover the pre-trim inspection. We use these type trimmers. 
And what we want to inspect each time before we use it, we want to take a look at the guard that blocks and deflects the debris that the head is throwing off. We want to check the head of the trimmer to make sure it is on secure and tight to make sure it doesn't fly off during use. Once we get the guard and the head checked out and they're properly working, we want to check our trigger assembly. What we do is we got a trigger lock here and we see that it moves freely and then we got our trigger. In order to start the trimmer, we have to unlock the trigger and once the trigger is unlocked, we're able to start using the trimmer. And we want to make sure that the trigger works freely and doesn't get stuck. And we want to make sure that the guard trigger lock works properly too by not letting us depress the trigger unless it is pressed also. Once we get in the field, we're going to do a proper starting procedure for a string trimmer. And what we're going to do is turn this on off switch to start. We're going to pull the uh, trigger lock, depress the trigger lock so we can pull the trigger, push the primer button a few times, just turn on the choke, make sure we're on firm level surface. Then we pull. Once we hear the motor start to start crank, shut off the primer uh, choke switch. And there we go. That's the proper starting procedure for a string trimmer. And now that I'm wearing all the proper PPE and we're in the field ready to start our string trimming, we want to have a firm level standing area, firm grip on the weed trimmer with both hands. And as we start trimming, make sure of our walking area so that we don't trip or slip over any thing that might be on the ground. This concludes the mowing and trimming safety video. And if you have any questions, you can always refer to the owner's manual of the mower or trimmer. And of course, you can always ask your supervisor. Thank you.